This podcast contains potentially adult language, adult themes, definitely drinking, and possibly sexual context. Listener discretion is advised. Welcome to Drinking with Authors, the Literary Briefs Edition. I'm, I don't know why I'm doing this thunderous <laughs> voice right now, actually. I'm your host, Eric. It's like a Tuesday, thunderous voice. It's ceremonial or something. Yes, it was very, very ceremonial. <laughs> it's happening. Had, uh, this didn't seem like a lot of cider, but I didn't eat dinner yet, so maybe it's doing me well. Okay, I am your host, Erica Lance. With me co-hosting today is the amazing Vanessa Valiente, and our guest today is Stephanie Briarton. Woo! Woo! Okay, <laughs> thunderous voice went from thunderous to cheery. Okay, let me talk about what I'm drinking that's got me in such a great state right now. It's Angry Orchard Hard Cider Crisp Apple Ridiculous Can Version. <laughs> So I'm, and I'm mostly done with my ridiculous can version. Um, Vanessa is pulling a gen tonight. What are you drinking? I'm drinking a double milk oolong tea. So yes. Sounds good. With a caffeine. Caffeine is the way to go right now. Caffeine is definitely the way to go. Of course, you could have put some Irish cream in that. Would have been great. <laughs> I am drinking an Arbor Mist white Zinfandel, exotic fruits. Ooh. Sounds delightful and tasty. It is tasty. So Good it's wrap a glass. How many glasses? How many glasses I'm are we in? Finishing up the second. I'm so proud of you. This is like two, <laughs> two, two, <laughs> two cans of this. Of me drink. and Vanessa. So thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> so this is rapid fire questions, my friend. Are you ready? Oh, you ready? Look, thunder is probably voice. not, but I need to do it anyway. So. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know what's funny is some people go, "Oh yeah, no, I studied for this part." And I'm like, is it in the exam? You studied for it? Because <laughs> I think we can all oh, study for when we're drunk and having to answer questions. That's not a thing. Whoever says that to me, I'm like, that's not a thing. Yeah. Okay, what is your favorite book of all time? I actually thought about that over the years, and I don't. I don't really have a favorite book necessarily, but um, as far as like the first book that ever got me into reading was uh, David Eddings, the Bulgarian series, you know, fantasy Ooh, yes. series about I young men. Series. Yeah, it was that, that series that got me into reading and just becoming an avid reader. And since then, I like any kind of story that's got a romance and we're just really strongly developed characters you know where you can just really see them as a person because that's usually what I like about a book is the characters and I will fall in love with those characters and if the story goes to hell in a handbasket I'm still fine as long as my characters are there so any book with a strong character well what is your favorite character of all time uh see she wasn't prepared for that I normally ask a different question well, at that time. do you yeah, see how yeah. I did that Vanessa you impressed I, 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 you threw me off I was like what yeah, yeah. Uh, again, I don't know if there's an ex actually a specific character, but I usually like something with a bit of romance. So if you've got a strong woman and a strong male who's, you know, just accept and they're like each accepting each other as they are, things like that. And whether they're a romantic couple or working together, whatever, I love those kinds of things. But that said, uh, I do like characters like um, the Cashel series. Was it by Jacqueline Carey? Okay. I, I love the characters in there. You know, both the, the female and male characters. So that's a good series too. Mm. Okay, cool, cool. See, I, I mixed it up a bit, Vanessa. I, I You're see. not even drinking and I threw you off. I just want you to be proud of me <laughs> at that moment. I love you guys it. have to watch the YouTube episode to see the look on Vanessa's face when I <laughs> asked that question. Oh, I literally was like, like uh, what? I was like. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That leads us to the least favorite book of all time. Ooh. Well, I don't know about that one exactly because usually if it's so bad, I'll just stop reading it. And so I can't really say that it's the worst one, but there is one book that stands out. I cannot think of the exact name of it, but it, it was something with Nazil in the end or in the title. And it was overly long and the, the middle just drug out really bad to where it seemed like nothing was happening for, um, I don't know, like 100,000 words. 
was a massive book, should have been two books. There's like nothing happening in the middle, but then like two battles at the end. And it was just, it was badly organized. It was, it just wasn't consistent. It also, it almost seemed like a first draft. Like maybe somebody just rushed it. Oh, wow. So, but I don't remember the exact name of it, but I know it had Nazil in the name. Cause that was like one of the races of the early, not the race, but that was like the, the, the nation of that, the one people. Hmm. Well, people watch out for that. Um, what is your favorite book to movie or book to TV series? See, these are these are all tough though, because usually I'll only watch one or the other. Because it seems like when I was younger, I had so many instances where I'd read a book and I'd see it in the movie and go, "Oh, that was horrible," or vice versa. You know, I'd watch the book and it was great, and then I'd find out that it was loosely based on a book that was only kind of halfway good. So mm -hmm. I've kind of gotten to the point where if I've read it, I don't want to see it. Or if I've seen it, I don't want to read it. Right. Um, but there are a few good ones. And I think probably one of my favorites, though, um, would be The Princess Bride. I oh, like that one. Yes. yes. I thought yeah. that was pretty well done. Yes. That's one of those rare, rare ones where you feel like they literally took the everything that was on the page and yeah. Put it there. I'm like, ah, oh, Wesley. That was one where I saw the movie first, and for years I wouldn't read it because I thought, no, I don't want to see it. I just, I, I love the movie so much. I'm not going to ruin it. But then I just, curiosity got the better of me, and I read it and went, okay, I feel better now. <laughs> I'm, I'm okay with that. Oh, but yeah. usually I try not to see both versions. It just, it's really disappointed in one of them. Well, I, my whole thing is I'll, I'll, I'll go into that thing where it's just like there's so many books or so many shows that whichever one that I did first, whether it's the book or the movie or the show, like I, I just don't, I want to go to the next story I don't know about unless it's like completely, completely different. And I think that's why, you know, there's just, there's so many uh, movies that I've watched, but I have the books on my shelf and I have not read them for that exact reason. Yeah. Well, me and Vanessa decided last year at Halloween, this was last year at Halloween, to read The Haunting of Hill House. Oh, okay. This is after the series came out on Netflix. Mm -hmm. And I listened to the audiobook of The Haunting of Hill House, and I did not love The Haunting of Hill House, the book. Huh. Why not? I like the series a lot better because I think one the, the entire book is told from Nell's Nell's point of view that's her name right Nell's Eleanor. point of view yeah Nell's or Eleanor yeah. yeah but her point of view the entire story basically is told from that point of view and um it's I don't know I just I didn't love the story and I I thought they did such a better job with the actual characters they created they're kind of a little bit in the book, but they elaborated on them more. And I liked what they actually did with it. But that's my personal, people are going to send me hate oh, mail. Mark, uh, Mark Muncy is going to come for you because him and I just had one of the, our other authors that we've interviewed. We had a conversation at, uh, we went to a horror convention and he says that he loves the book but is not the biggest fan of the show because the show in the book are very, very different. And I think yeah. the element that you don't really get in the show is the whole purpose of The Haunting of Hill House is you don't know if Eleanor is really experiencing these horrific situations or is it all in her head? And so that was kind of the whole mystery of the book. But to me, like if you love films and like cinematography, that show like just having that continuous shot it was just absolutely beautiful like I don't know I like them both equally personally yeah I just thought they did such an and the casting was amazing and kind of going down how normal that family seemed until you saw how broken that family was like I felt like anyway that was yeah. a good one what was interesting though I have to say is um my boyfriend's uh twin brother uh, they're huge Jurassic Park fans, huge dinosaur fans. And I'm like, have you ever read the book? And he's like, no. So he happened to join me because um, I live in North Carolina, come back and forth to Florida. And so I was driving and he, so I bought the audio book and I, because I had read Jurassic Park and I played it for him. And he was like, yeah, this should have been a rated R movie. It's a very different book than the movie. Like the movie is very much a kid's movie, all this stuff. 
it's such a different book. And even though the characters are actually a little bit similar to the book, they're put in the wrong context of what's happening. Mm. Because in the book, a lot of people don't realize, spoiler alert, the dinosaurs are already off the island. It starts with the dinosaurs have gotten off the island. And so they're going to do a check to see basically how bad is it? Like, how bad is this situation that the dinosaurs already got off the island? How did they get off the island? All this other stuff. To which is when the ideal of this theme park where people are not thinking about the consequences of their actions and stuff like that ends up, you know, folding. But it's very much a rated R book, even though the kids are in it. The kids are actually switched in the movie. People don't realize that the boy is actually older than the girl. And the boy is the dinosaur fan, even though he's older than the girl, you mm-hmm. know, and it's very much they they have a lot more stuff going through that park and a lot more things. And I thought it was really interesting listening to it again, because I had read it before the movie came out. So 80 bazillion years ago, but reading it again, I listening to it again, I was like, this would be really kick ass. And at the end of it, he was like, I wonder if they'll ever make a rated R version. And I said, the problem is with dinosaurs, you really can't make rated R versions of dinosaurs because kids love dinosaurs. That is and true. Yeah. You, you know, Jurassic Park kind of set the precedent that dinosaurs equal a kid-friendly movie. Yeah. <laughs> well, okay. So this this is going to lead me to the to the next question. What is your favorite trope? When you read other books, like what's your, or even when you write, what's your favorite trope? There are so many good ones out there. Uh, There, probably a ton of the romance tropes, really. I mean, I'm surprised I'm not just like straight up in in romance, Um, but anything, you know, like forced proximity or single bed, things like that. I, I like stuff like that. In fact, I've got one that I'm working on, um, just kind of a little side project. I don't know what I'm going to do with it, but it's where, you know, a man and a woman come from different ways, but end up finding themselves trapped in a cabin together in the mountains, you know, Mm -hmm. and they got like spend a weekend together. So Mm -hmm. I I like things like that. Is is she a doctor of some kind? Does she own a bakery? (laughs) Excited yet. I haven't gotten I that joke far about yet. that because of the the Harla, the Hallmark movies. I have friends who are diehard Hallmark fans, diehard. Yeah, and just I have, some, I have some too. Yeah, yeah, and I say so they watch the movies, and it's like the doctor, a raccoon doctor in Montana, falls in love with a beautiful florist, and I'm like, who the hell writes this shit? Like, I'm like this is not even a real yeah. thing. All this makeup, um, t- you know, scenarios. Yeah. And my friend will go, wait, is that a real movie? And I'm like, the fact that you thought that is a real movie. Yeah. 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 To me, I feel like those are, yeah. I can only do, because I'm not a, ha- a huge Hallmark person, but I, I will concede if it's a holiday movie for some yeah. reason. If Christmas is involved, I, I will let it slide, but I, I can't, I can't do really formulaic, simple, like, yeah storyline usually drives me nuts but it seems like at the holidays i usually do get a little sentimental and i might watch you know two or three within the month of december yeah. you know just to kind of like to feel good type stuff you know yeah. but then, then i'm done for the year you can't do exactly. it anymore exactly so. i just watch love actually over and over again oh. I love that movie yeah That's that amazing. is good That's they did a very good job of tying lines together Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, yeah. And it's nice because there was like all these different types of love stories it wasn't yeah. very I don't know you had like a little kid crush then you have the one where you fell in love with your best friend's wife you know like all yeah. these different things and I and I love it that it's it felt very real it didn't feel like some kind of a cheesy romance you know nothing really just yeah. tied into a perfect box but it so, also didn't, it wasn't just about the, the romantic romances either, but they even had like the, the love story between like the, the kid and the stepdad, didn't they? It, it, it wasn't, it, you know, it was more like, the, or maybe it was just father and son, but they included a, a father-son type bonding relationship too. Right. 
and also the, the romantic love, but then it was also yeah. about familial and then love. The, old, the, the couple who had been married, who had children, and then Ooh. their romance kind of fizzling out. It's just, right. uh, I love stuff like that. See, I like that, you know, but sometimes you just need to like, you know, have a really cheesy Christmas movie in the background. So I'll be like, okay, Hallmark, you got me. You got me in December. So yeah. <laughs> I'll do one or two, but yeah. that's not it. <laughs> Yeah, yep. they drive me crazy. Like there's so many weird things in the oh, they just drive me nuts. I'm I'm I do not relax while watching those movies. They just end up irritating the crap out of me. I'm like yeah. the Christmas Prince. Oh my god, don't let get me started on all the things wrong with that movie. I watched all three. I watched all three last December, and I told myself when the first movie came out, I'm like, I'm never gonna watch this. The second mm. movie came out like the next year. I'm like, I'm not gonna watch this. And I watched the Christmas Prince, and then the wedding, and then the baby. And I'm like, <laughs> at the end, I was like, had a self loathing moment, and I'm like, why did I do this to myself? Mm. <laughs> I think it's because I think Bridgerton had came out. And I had like the worst like slump right after it. And I was like, mm-hmm. okay, I'm going to do this. And I watched, I watched those. I caved. I did it. Did that equal Bridgerton there? Never. No, not at all. Not at all. It was not even <laughs> close, but somehow I had justified it in my mind. I'm like, okay, romance. We're, we're, it's, I'm going to get that same feeling. Yeah, no. <laughs> Bridgerton was good. That's hard to beat that one. I oh. like that. I know. I can't wait. I can't wait for season two. It's going to be so right. Okay. Enough with Bridgerton. Now moving on to next question. Um, before we run out of time, which we will hear momentarily. Well, here, well, well least favorite trope. You got to go in and do the least favorite trope. <sighs> least favorite, I think is any of the really predictable ones. Um, there's uh, one, I seems like in critiquing people's stuff, I've seen it like twice in the past six months. And that's where somebody is in danger and then there's a knock at the door and they just know that it is the roommate who always forgets their keys so instead of asking oh who is it is it the person who's out to kill me they just open the door oh here's your key oh whoops and then they're dead or you know they're attacked or something (laughs) any of those I just feel like they're so overdone Mm -hmm. and they just make the the person that they make the character look stupid I mean you know you're in danger why are you just going to open the door and assume it's the person who forgot the key? It's like when someone goes down the basement and I'm yeah. like, really guys, are we going down the basement? There was no, there's, I mean, if you hear a weird noise, that's yeah. the last place I'm going okay, to. Okay. So yeah. do you guys watch a lot of true crime shows? I don't know. Okay. I watch a ridiculous amount of true crime shows because okay. I write horrific horror all the time. It's and research. Y- yes. And it, all, people are that fucking dumb. Let me just clarify. People are that <laughs> yeah. dumb. The oh, amount really. of people that left windows open and shit like that. Like if you watch the Night Stalker documentary from the guy who was in LA, who Richard Ramirez, who went in, he went in through open windows. He wasn't like breaking into people's fucking houses. He went in through open windows, oh my open God. back patio doors. Yeah, I can't do that. <laughs> But are there? I know, but are, are I'm just telling you, people are so you know? dumb when it comes to stuff like this. But is it like in a town where people, like, because you do hear, not that. In Los just, Angeles, people were not closing their oh, house. Oh, hey, okay, that's different. That's I was ridiculous. thinking, yeah. now that's dumb. I was thinking, like, you know how, like, a small town, everyone knows each other and everyone keeps their doors open. It, it wasn't like that. It was actually, like, in the middle of Chicago or something crazy like that. That Now, see, that's stupid. Well, you have that. You have a lot of people that, you know, get drunk and try to walk home from a pub, even though it's five minutes walk, for instance, but it's in the dark and you're impaired. Like there, people make very poor choices and, you know, things with the door, if you're young and you're living in a town and you have several roommates, it could be anybody, you know what I mean? So you don't think about it. Like I watched a video the other day and it was on, um, it was on TikTok or something. It was a girl practicing ballet dancing. And all of a sudden a dude comes in through her fire escape window and she got him on tape. Oh, wow. Oh my God. 
<laughs> yeah, no, I, you, you'd be amazed. Not that it's a bad trope, it can be done very badly, but I think it exists as a trope because it actually happens more than you'd like to think in real life. People yeah. give away way too much information. Like there was recently a guy who was convicted for killing people from a dating app. He raped mm -hmm. and killed three women. You know who caught him? One of the women's friends went on the dating app, found him because he had shared the pictures with the girl, lured him in and got attacked, but had the police there right after as she was getting attacked. And that's what caught him. Oh, oh my God. Wow. Yeah, you hear about like people uh, tracking people through Ancestry.com and, you know, people are like, oh, here, I'm going to make my family tree. And then they get someone's information and then they go on a killing spree based off that. That uh, to me, I've always, I've always worried about stuff like that. That's why I've never done that stuff. <laughs> yeah, that's mind boggling. But yeah. all right. Well, people, if you're listening do not be that person. Close your damn windows. Don't go down the, 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 the basement. If you hear a weird noise, wait until there's some daylight and an exorcist right nearby and just like, you know, put some, I don't know, what, what, do, you, what do you smoke on the- uh, Sage. Sage. Yeah. You know, do one so of those. Are, are we running from demons or are we running from real people there, Vanessa? Listen, you have two different listen. trucks. Like, it can happen with after 2020 at this point i believe king kong can come out of the mount i don't know anything can happen i i believe so i hope king kong does come out because i'm going to break reference to this show on social media and be like vanessa predicted it she warned you guys king kong was showing up i know he was in the, he was in the mountains or in the forest and he came out i'm just saying anything's possible zombies can happen you know, I'm going to cover all of my bases. Good idea. <laughs> She's got her, her evacuation pack in her house. Okay. Yeah. So Stephanie, I'm going to ask you one last set of questions since we went so left here and Vanessa's not even drinking and there were demons and okay. zombies and King Kong. <laughs> um, I actually kind of want you sober from now on. This is a fun version of you. Is the <laughs> Okay. Oh um, Stephanie, what about music? Do you listen to music while you write? Uh, I didn't until recently. Uh, I just have always gotten distracted by the lyrics and people said, well, do something in a foreign language. So I tried that, but even not knowing what they were saying, I found myself eventually singing along anyway. Didn't know what the words were, but you know, you get the tune. But I recently found that uh, video game music is great to write to because mm -hmm. it's designed to help the gamers focus and they've got the softer stuff for the quieter moments and they've got the hardcore stuff for battle scenes, but it's designed to kind of be in the background and not really draw your attention. So that's what I've been using recently is video game music. Which, is there a specific video game that you're gravitating to? I've got a variety. Um, there's some of my kids stuff that you know I've played off and on throughout the years. And so I really like the Assassin's Creed music. Oh, yes. And yeah, Halo is good for when I'm writing battle scenes. They've got some really great music there. Um, but then I just have a variety of stuff. I, as soon as I started listening to that, it would just start throwing in other, you know, music from different games. Some I've heard of, some I haven't. And so I've got a good little collection you, now. You movie it. scores, the movie scores without I've done a few words, of those, those yeah. are super helpful. And But what they call it is trailer music. So yeah. any time for trailer and I feel like, especially with fantasy, it is my favorite thing to listen to because it yeah. allows you to kind of sink into an emotion. Because like, yeah. like what you said, sometimes I'll get caught up in the words of the song and then I'll start yeah. singing. And I'm like, wait a minute, that's not what I'm yeah. supposed to do. I do have some stuff yeah. from movies in there too. I've got some uh, Lord of the Rings and Hobbit stuff. Oh. And there's a really great one from one of the Iron Man movies. I don't remember which one it is. There's mm -hmm. a great song in there that really kind of peps me up and so yeah, I've, I've started listening to that when I write. Nice. Very cool. Okay. So um, Rel Realm of Madness, that's the most recent release, right? Yes. And the first one is Realm of? Secrets. Secrets. Yes. See, I had the Realm of Madness. I just want points for remembering because yeah. I'm nice and toasty right now. So oh, yeah. Realm of Madness, that just came out. And the next one is Realm of Depths? No, the next one is The Drowned Realm. The Drowned Realm. That's it. I knew there was a 
there was a going down thing. I had the right first couple this of letters. This is the one that has the contest, right? That you borrowed, you're taking something from an old book you wrote, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah, it was, the, the first book was about a water breathing race who, you know, just, I you know, won't get into the whole history of it, but the ocean came rushing in and basically drowned their whole city. And so now this is about that realm because basically the characters start off in one realm, you know, their home realm, and then they go to a, another realm in the second book and now they're going to go to a third one. And so they're kind of traveling all over the continent. That's nice. very awesome. Very awesome. Okay. How do people find you? Let's go back to that again. I, I have a website, stephaniebryerton.com and all my social media links are on there. Um, but then you can also find me on uh, Instagram and Facebook and just search Stephanie Briarton and I should be the only one in there. Awesome sauce. Awesome sauce. You have been fantastic. Thank you for being on the show. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. It was a lot of fun. Absolutely. And this is technically yeah, your second great. podcast. And <laughs> you didn't even know. Well, you're you're a pro now. You're a pro <laughs> now. Yes. Awesome. So, so, okay, guys, this has been Drinking with Authors Literary Briefs Edition. I've been your host, Erica Lance. With me has been Vanessa Valiente as my co-host. And our guest has been Stephanie Briarton. Wonderful, wonderful. And we will see you guys next time.